Greetings, I am Dr. Sattvika, second year postgraduate student from the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, Sri Bharaji Dental College and Hospital. In this session, we are going to deal about physical properties of dental materials. Physical properties helps in understanding the behavior of materials. It gives an insight about how to maximize their performance. It helps in the selection, placement, and maintenance of dental materials. Under physical properties, we are going to deal about abrasion, abrasion resistance, rheological properties, optical properties, thermal properties, and chemical properties. Loss of material from a surface caused by a mechanical action through combination of chemical and mechanical action is called abrasion. Hardness is used as an index of the ability of the material to resist abrasion of that. Simply, resistance to plastic deformation or permanent deformation of a material is known as abrasion resistance. Hardness test is divided into macro hardness and micro hardness. Under macro hardness, we have Brinell hardness and Rockwell hardness test. Under micro hardness, we have loop hardness and Nickel hardness test. So, if the load is less than 9.8 newtons and the indentation depth is less than 19 microns, it is classified under micro hardness test. Under Brinell hardness test, a low load is attached to a steel ball or metal ball specifically, and when this is made to press on the surface of the object whose hardness is to be determined, a round impression is obtained on the surface of the object. And then the hardness of this object can be calculated by using the formula load by area of inundation. Smaller the inundation, the greater the hardness number and uh, harder the material is. It is best suited for ductile materials. In Rockwell hardness test, a conical diamond point is used. Is it is made to press on the surface of the object. A conical indentation is obtained. Here, it is used. Uh, the hardness is then used. Uh, hardness is calculated by using the formula load by depth of the penetration of the indicator. Coming to weaker hardness test. A pyramid shaped diamond indenting tool is used as an indenter, and when this is used to press on the surface of the object, a square shaped indentation is obtained. The length of the diamonds of the indentation is measured and averaged, and then it is calculated using the formula load by area of indentation. Because hardness test is used to measure brittle materials, and hence we can measure the tooth structure. Under loop hardness, a uh, diamond tip is used to measure a uh, diamond tip inlaying tool is it is used when this is made to press on the surface of the object a rhomboid shape outline is obtained in rhomboid we have minor and major axis the elastic recovery occurs along the minor axis and the longer larger axis major axis remains unchanged so in uh, this larger axis that is a major axis is used in the formula and when the hardness is measured using loop hardness, it is measured by load by area of indentation. Rheological properties is a study of flow or deformation of materials. Under rheological properties, we have viscosity, viscoelasticity, and creep. Resistance of liquid to flow is called viscosity. The unit is megapascal per second or centrifugal. Here we have two liquids, liquid A and liquid B. If liquid A flows readily, more readily when compared to liquid B, then liquid A is less weak viscous when compared to liquid B. Here we have two disc, discs and in, between, and in between them we have liquid. When a force is applied to the upper disc, the liquid tries to resist that force and a minimum amount of force is required to overcome this frictional resistance that is the viscosity of that liquid. It finally moves to a distance D. So, when any external force is applied to the body, it gives a uh, it gives an a uh, force which is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. We have three types of forces: tensile force, compressive force, and complex force. The tensile force tends to pull the object apart; that is, it elongates the object. The compressive force tends to shorten the object and complex force is a combination of these three forces. The shear force is nothing but it is it takes place in liquid. When a force is applied on a disc, it slides to it tries a, a tends to slide apart. So this type of forces is called as a shear stress. So 
uh, viscosity is a shear stress by shear rate. This is the visco this graph, this uh, slope is a viscosity. The fluids can be classified into Newtonian fluid and non-Newtonian fluids. The Newtonian fluid follows the Newton's law of uh, viscosity. It, the graph is linear, example water. The pseudo in pseudoplastic fluid, that is in non-Newtonian fluids like plastic, dilated and pseudoplastic, the graph is not linear. In pseudoplastic fluid, the viscosity decreases as the shear rate increases. In dilated fluid, the viscosity increases as the shear rate increases. And in being a plastic, there is no change in viscosity until a specific amount of load is applied to it. So example of uh, Newtonian fluid is zinc phosphate. Example of pseudoplastic is uh, rubber-based impression materials that is like putty. And for uh, dilated, it is uh, denture-based resin. And for being a plastic, it is impression-based. Uh, that is when the specific amount of when until it reaches a threshold level, the impression phase will not come out. So thixotropy, it is a property of certain gel or other materials to become liquefied when shaken, stirred, patted, or vibrated. Examples, dental plaster, prophylaxis paste, or resin cement. The, the, the thixotropic impression materials does not flow out of the mandibular impression tray until placed over dental tissues. A prophylaxis paste does not flow out of the rubber cup until it is agitated against the teeth to be cleaned. The ability of a material to undergo elastic recovery immediately after the removal of an applied load is called elasticity. Viscoelasticity is used to describe materials that exhibit characteristics of both viscous liquid and elastic solid, example alginates and rubber-based impression materials. Creep. Now coming to creep, a metal has a specific, uh, let's see, let's suppose a metal has a melting point of 60 degrees Celsius. When it is heated to a metal, no, when it is heated to about 60 degrees Celsius, the metal undergoes transformation to a fluid form. So when a metal is heated to a temperature nearing to its boiling point, melting, sorry, melting point that is nearly 258 degrees Celsius, it undergoes a deformation inside the metal. This time-dependent plastic deformation which occurs inside the metal under a constant flow is called the creep. Little amalgam has a melting point slightly above room temperature. When this melting point is reached, little amalgam will show creep and that is the structure of the restoration. Flow is similar to creep, but it is used in amorphous solids such as waxes. Coming to optical properties, light is electromagnetic radiate energy. Human eye is sensitive to wavelengths for above 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. Color is a combined intensity of all these wavelengths present in the light determines the properties of the color. Three dimensions of color are hue, value, and chroma. Hue is a property associated with the dominant color of the object. Like red, blue, and yellow are the primary colors, and green, purple, and orange are the secondary colors. Value is the shades of the color. It represents as dark shades and light shades. Value is independent of the hue and chroma, so value can occur on its own. Chroma is a difference in the color spread. Like dull, the same color appears dull and vivid. The color, is, it is a saturation of the particular color. It is called as a chroma. So, uh, the, bana, uh, the lemon appears vivid when compared to banana, which is dull in color. This is called as chroma. Measure, measurement of color is given by Munsell. Here, in this color system, in this, uh, the peri uh, hue is represented along the perimeter of the cylinder, chroma along the radius of the cylinder, and value along the length of the cylinder. White is at the top of the cylinder, black at the bottom, and shades of gray in the middle. Metamedicine. A particular color appears bright under sunlight, and the same color appears dim in certain lightning, lightning conditions. So na natural tooth observes light of shorter wavelength and emits light of longer wavelength. This gives the tooth a, a, a lively appearance. It is, this property is called as a fluorescence. 
Now coming to shade selection, it is highly subjective. The results can be inconsistent because, because of light source, brand of shade, kai, and psychological problems. When, come, when, when, the, uh, when we select a shade for a patient, our eyes should be uh, at the level of the patient's mouth because the color which the other uh, the retina the color the cones which is the cones which is responsible for selecting the color situated at the center of the retina so while well, while selecting the shade guide we should be at the level of the patient's mouth Light source. The appearance of the object is dependent on the nature of the light in which the object is viewed. Daylight, incandescent, and fluorescent lamps are common source in the dental operating. Due to metamerism, color matching should be done under two or more different light sources, one of which should be daylight, and a laboratory shade matching procedure should be performed under same lighting condition. So while shade selection, we should uh, ask the patient to smile normally and move the shade guide from left to right. And the color should be uh, concluded and then it should be concluded in five seconds because it might cause some inconsistent results due to saturation of the color. It is highly recommended to see a neutral color like gray before, select before shade selection. Thermal properties. Thermal conductivity indicates how well a material transfers heat energy. Heat energy. Thermal diffusivity measures the rate of transfer of thermal energy within a substance of non-uniform temperature. Coefficient of thermal expansion is a change in unit length of material when the temperature is lowered or raised by one degree Celsius. Solid substances transfer heat through a process of conduction. Thermal conductivity is measured as the coefficient of thermal conductivity is the amount of heat in calories per second passing through one centimeter thick specimen having a cross-sectional area of one centimeter square when the heat difference between the ends is one Kelvin. The higher the value, greater is the material's ability to conduct thermal energy and vice versa. Materials having high thermal conductivity are known as good conductors of heat example metals. On the other hand, materials with low conductivity are known as insulators, example, zinc phosphate or zinc polycarbon oxide. So, in case of bead cavities, zinc phosphate, with a, uh, which has a low thermal conductivity, is used as a base. Uh, here, the remaining dental thickness will be less. So, when we use zinc phosphate, there will be uh, uh, less if it has low thermal conductivity. In case of uh, in case of where dental thickness is sufficient, the dental itself will act as a natural barrier. The value of thermal diffusivity indicates the rate of temperature change as heat passes through the material. Excuse me. As temperature fluctuates constantly in the oral cavity, thermal diffusivity plays a major role. In dentistry, it is the rate at which the temperature rises at the pulpal end of the restriction when heat is applied on the occlusal surface of the restriction. It is directly proportional to the thermal conductivity and inversely proportional to the specific heat. The low thermal conductivity and diffusivity of enamel and dentin aids in reducing the pulpal pain and shock when hot or cold foods are taken into the mouth. Coefficient of thermal expansion is a change in unit length of the material when the temperature is lowered or raised by 1 degree Celsius. When there is a mismatch in CTE, the restriction may expand or contract more than the tooth structure. When the restriction contracts more than the tooth structure, there is a gap formation along the tooth restrictive interface, leading to percolation or micro leakage of the fluid across the barrier. When the restriction expands, there will be an outward thrust of the restriction, leading to sensitivity of pain and a fracture of the cusps. Here, the glass enamel cement has uh, more or less the same coefficient of ex thermal expansion uh, when compared to enamel. Now, coming to tarnish and corrosion. We, in dentistry, we use, met we use a variety of metals like uh, restrictive materials and instruments we use. So, uh, our oral cavity forms a favorable environment for the formation of corrosion products. A corrosion, a material, a restrictive material should have a, a pre, uh, should have a requirement that it should not form any corrosive products in the oral cavity. 
So in natural forms, metals are bonded to non-metals such as oxides and sulfides. Uh, the metals, metal oxides and metal sulfides are defined to form a pure metal. Here, pure metal have a high energy, which is not stable. So it naturally wants to, tends to uh, become a uh, trans, to lower its energy and then revert back to its normal or bounded form. So while this happened, uh, there is a formation of corrosion products due to loss of energy. Tarnish is a surface discoloration on metal. It is a slight loss or alteration of the surface finish of the lustre. Causes of tarnish is soft and hard deposits on the surface of the restoration, stains by pigment producing bacteria, oxide, sulfides, or chloride fill formation of the metals. Corrosion is the actual iteration of the metal due to its reaction with the surrounding environment. Disintegration of metals occurs in the course of time and that is a mechanical failure of the restoration. Hydrogen sulfide and ammonium sulfide corrode amalgam restoration. Classification of corrosion is chemical or dry corrosion, electrochemical or galvanic corrosion. Under chemical or dry corrosion, no electrolyte is present. The metal reacts to form oxides or sulfide in the absence of electrolytes. For example, discoloration of silver by sulfide, the silver sulfide forms by chemical corrosion. Under electrochemical corrosion of wet corrosion, the name indicates there is electrolyte or water which acts as electrolyte. Here, two electrodes is immersed in the electrolyte like anodes and cathode and a current is passed. When this system is being used in the oral cavity, imagine as such, and when uh, the oxidation reduction reaction takes place. The oxidation reaction takes place in the anode here. It loses electrons. That is, metal loses electron and it acquires a positive charge. The corrosion occurs in this anode and the reduction reaction takes place in the cathode. Here, in the EMF series, when two metals like silver and copper are used, the copper with a low EMF uh, potential corrodes. Types of corrosion is galvanic corrosion, stress corrosion, concentration, shell corrosion. Under galvanic corrosion, this type of chemical, electrochemical corrosion occurs when two or more dissimilar metals are in direct contact with each other. Here, saliva acts as an electrolyte. When they come in contact as they are during mastication, a sudden short circuit occurs that results in a sharp shooting pain experienced by the patient, which is called as a galvanic shock. Galvanic erosion occur causes weakening of both the alloys, discoloration of both the restoration, presence of metallic taste in the mouth. Coming to heterogeneous composition, here imagine this is an amalgam restoration. There are two metals. The red has a low EMF uh, potential and green has a high EMF potential. And the uh, metal with a low EMF series corrodes. Under stress corrosion, cold working causes metal to be stressed out. This stressed of metal is more reactive. This stressed of metal acts as an anode and unstressed metal acts as a cathode. Stressed out metal undergo corrosion, example orthodontic wires. Concentration cell of revised corrosion occurs due to variation in light concentration. There are often accumulation of food debris in the interproximal areas between the teeth. The debris then produces an electrolyte in that area, which is different from the electrolyte produced by saliva at the occlusal surface. The electrochemical corrosion of the alloy surface underneath the layer of the food debris will take place in this situation. Oxygen concentration cell corrosion also comes under concentration cell corrosion in which different parts of same restoration can, can have difference in oxygen concentration. Lab accumulation decreases of the restoration may result in lower oxygen concentration in these areas, which then acts as an anode and undergo corrosion. Greater corrosion occurs in the part of the restoration having lower concentration of oxygen. Protection against corrosion. Gold coating can help as gold as it is less reactive. Non-conducive film like varnish is applied on dissimilar metal restoration. And passivating metal like chromium can be applied. And guidelines state that at least half of the dental alloy should contain noble metals because it reduces the rate of corrosion. Thank you for your kind attention.